guys. Apologies for a uh, lack of podcast over the last few weeks. Um, I've just been crazy, crazy busy. In fact, it's uh, it's been probably it's probably been my busiest year that I've had in many, many years. Uh, it's like a contrast, I guess, to the quiet that happened during that COVID era. It's like life comes back and hits you with a vengeance. And if you don't know why, if you don't know why I've been so busy, for those who are interested, it's because uh, this year in, in Bali, well, apart from moving here full time to Bali, somewhere I've been back and forwards a lot and, and known over the years. Uh, <coughs> aside from moving here, obviously also set up a full time school. So students training here from nine till, well, sometimes at, at night, generally nine to five, but then some evening classes as well, but full time, basically five days a week. Every single week <laughs> for the entire year. A small break in the summer, but then I was teaching retreats in summer. So basically running the full-time school, which means I'm, I've been teaching every single day. Not all day. There's a great group of teachers here. But every single day I've been teaching and working with the same group um, of people who've also come to live in, in Bali. People from all over the world. So running a full-time school has been hard work. Plus... Uh, I mean, getting used to that kind of teaching is so different. It's so different from running a class or even running a workshop. It's a whole different endeavor, which has been really fascinating. And I've learned a lot from it, uh, but I'm tired now. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. Um, and doing that plus building the school, getting it set up, navigating all the legal um, side of opening a business in a foreign country and uh, complicated, you know, it's been a it's been a crazy year. Plus going to see my own teacher, which is always um, but always fascinating, always amazing, but tiring as well, you know, very demanding, uh, the training I do with my teacher. So yeah, super busy, super, super busy. And amongst all that, I managed to fit in, you know, hours and hours of my own practice as well. And now I sit here, it's actually the end of my year, you know, it might seem a bit early to some of you guys, because it's only what, what is it? Third week in November, second week, no, third week in November, isn't it? Something like that. Still, you know, a fair while left of this year, but my teaching year is over soon. I've got I've got a few days left just to wrap up the training for the students here, the end of their first year of full time training, um, and then I've got a couple of months off over the winter, which will be really nice. Much as I've loved teaching all this year, I'm looking forward to having a couple of months off over the winter as well, which will be really good. So yeah, I mean, I've just completed, um, well, not just me, all of the teachers have completed running the first year of our full time teaching project in the internal and external arts actually we we did some external arts too so we've had roughly between 70 and 90 people at a time here i guess depending on the month over the course of this year and um yeah people are staying here to to, to study full-time i'm surprised how many people can be here full-time but yeah quite a quite amazing uh to see the level of commitment people have put in it, it, i was looking at the students the other day actually maybe on wednesday i was teaching a class i was doing a tai chi class on wednesday i think and uh i just looked out and everybody looked tired <laughs> they look good they look strong they look better than they did at the start of the year technically proficient things like this but um tired everybody looks tired everyone looks worn down it's been a very very demanding year so i think everyone's happy for a, a break so yeah i thought in this episode podcast whatever it is another one of my rambly ones i thought to just talk about like some of the things that i learned from running this course because over this year since february when we started february this year i guess i've been teaching a mix of the students here where they study qigong and and Neigong kind of combine Qigong and Neigong into in one module and then they also study Tai Chi and then they've been study the basics of martial arts as well like a separate module on on martial arts which is all the stuff that doesn't often get covered like punching and kicking this year particularly striking footwork those kind of things that I think are universal to all martial arts uh, practitioners doesn't matter what style you do um, I think it's wise everyone needs to be able to throw for martial arts should be able to throw a straight and a cross and a hook and an uppercut and the front kick and a round kick. you know those kind of things so this year really has been about foundations so I guess in the the missions I've had in the Nagon class was really to build everybody's Dantian or, or show them how to do it obviously get them to build their Dantian get them to start filling the body with Qi get them to start mobilizing that Qi that's really was the main aim of the Qigong and Nagon classes Tai Chi was to learn the uh, the first of our forms the most basic one uh, which is the the Huang Xin Xian's 
37 posture form, which is where we start. It's very much based on sinking and touching the ground and mobilizing everything through the inside of the body. Uh, and then from there, we move on to more intricate, more complex versions of, of Tai Chi. But it's my starter form that I train with people. So they've learned that and learned the basics of the push hands, drills, um, and basically how to structure the body and get the correct mechanics of Tai Chi into the body. And people have done really well on that, especially considering lots of people have never done Tai Chi before. But throughout this year, they've built that foundation quite nicely. And then in the martial arts module, sort of martial arts 101, if you like, uh, it's people teaching people how to punch and connect and use their body properly and how to kick and how to move their feet and, and those kind of coordination things that I think are, are normal to martial arts and, and oddly normally lacking in the internal arts. When people come into internal arts, often they'll learn Tai Chi, they'll learn push hands, learn form, but they don't learn the basics of how to move their body more like a boxing class or something like that. So that's been good taking people through that. And that's basically what we've covered over the year, as well as all the other stuff, you know, like stretching and how to breathe, how to condition the body, how to make it healthy, um, we've covered hours and hours of theory. Every week I give theoretical lectures on everything from health and transforming the body and meditation, how to develop the mind. We've, we've covered a lot. It's been intense. <laughs> it's been intense, I don't mind saying. And the students here have done really well to absorb so much information. And what a great group. Only had a couple of difficult people. I mean, right at the beginning, um, someone was challenging, which happens in the martial arts. People challenge you and had to be uh, dealt with. Uh, and that's the ugly side of martial arts, and it happens, and, and that's it. But thankfully, it didn't cause too much of a stir. It was just a very brief thing. Someone had to be dealt with and got rid of. And then after that, it's been great. Like The, the way everybody's gone on and, and built friendships and, and cohesion amongst the group has been, has been great. And all the other teachers have been in good. There's six of us? I don't know. Maybe that's about right. Six. Yeah, something like that of us running the school teaching anyway. Um, so, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. It's been fantastic. It has been... <laughs> so, yeah, the things I learned, I think... I think I learned that uh, uh, it's hard work. <laughs> it's the first thing I learned. I learned that teaching this often is, is hard work. To teach every single day is almost like endurance teaching. And I think especially alongside your own practice as well, because I don't count teaching time as training time. Some people do. I know they think I've done two hours teaching, so that counts as two-hour training, but I don't actually. I I have to work on my own arts as well. So that, that's been hard work. But alongside that, there's a different... Like, if you've got the same group for a protracted period of time, there's another level of complexity where you kind of have to stay on top of what they're doing. And it's, it's like, I guess, if you do a, a weekly class or something... Not that you finish a whole style in a weekly class, but you, you kind of have an idea of we cover this topic in completion. You know, today we're going to look at this particular set of movements or this weekend course, we're going to look at this set or something. Like that's what you do. It has a sort of completion in itself. It doesn't mean that you know everything there is to know about that subject within an evening class or a weekly or a, or a weekend workshop or something, but it has a start, a beginning and an end. You know, very clear. It has to have that structure. Whereas when you're teaching full time, and you've got people every single day who are training nine to five every single day, you you kind of have a different take on it. And it took me a little while to get into the swing of that, that actually you don't have to complete something within a set space of time. You have to complete something by the end of the year. So I kind of had subjects that started and ended at the beginning and the end of the year. And then the mental gymnastics you have to do is monitoring what each student is doing along that way. And you study all the little parts and you develop the skills and then that person needs to do this and then this group needs to repeat that exercise. They can repeat it for four or five days. We've got plenty of time. And then we move on. And it, it's, it's a juggling act to try to meet the needs of that many people over the course of long-term training because your, your goals become different. And that's what I learned with teaching, how different the goal is of I don't want this person to learn this thing, I want them to learn a complete package in a length of time, in a longer period of time. So balancing the medicine and the energetics and the meditation and the, and the martial arts side of it all together has been fascinating, but uh, very good and very taxing for my brain. You know, But I think got the hang of it. I think next year will be better. This year was good, next year will be better. I like to improve each year. And I think next year I'll be going into it with mostly the same group, so they already have the foundations, but I'll be going into next year with more of an idea of the nature of what full-time school training is, you know. So, I mean, over the course of the year, 
uh, only really studied one form, you know, one martial art form, one one tai chi form. It, it's not it's not like we loaded people up. Like sometimes if you go to a sort more of sort of more contemporary mainstream school, uh, a more mainstream or contemporary school, say Wudang Mountain or something, which um, a lot of Westerners go to for a full time education over a period of time. I, I remember going there and I didn't really get on with the Wudang system. It wasn't really my thing. No no problem with anyone else who does. It just wasn't really for me. It wasn't what I was looking for. Um, but I had a look and you know, I, I checked it out and I saw what people were doing. And, and in that kind of school, it was very much you do this form, then this form, then this form, this form. You sort of load it up and then, then, then you're like so many forms in a long period of time. And we had some people who'd come from those kind of schools. And I was a bit concerned as to whether they think they wouldn't be learning enough. But actually they got right into it and realized that going deep is is very, very good. So we only really covered one form over the course of this year in the martial arts and then lots of drills, basically lots and lots of drills. And the same in the Negong, we really went deep into the Dantian development side of things. Um, so, so yeah, that's really what we, we focused on. So there's a very much a difference between a weekly class and a full-time school and yeah, very, very different. And it, it's good that it gave me time as well to, like my way of teaching was I would introduce a concept or something through a simple movement. Like, for example, okay, can we get the gin to mobilize inside through this particular movement? And of course, at the beginning, you, you show people the movement, they can't do it. Nobody can do it because the qualities are not built into the body and many of the internal arts are not really techniques, they're qualities. So they try and can't do so then you come back to, you get on with what you're doing training-wise, and then you come back to the training three months later and you try again, and mm, there's a little glimmer of it, and then you come back, and then you wait three months later and you try again, and bang, then people start to get it. And then how I finished this year last week was I essentially did the same drill at the end of the year as I did right at the start of the year, and at the start of the year nobody could do it. And we didn't come back to that drill very much. We just developed, 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 and then come back to that drill at the end of the year, and people could do it. People could mobilize. So by the end of this, certainly the group that had been here the whole year could mobilize the Dantian, rotate it very effectively during the movement, um, develop it so the jin stretches out to the fingers so the body connects up. And then many of those phrases, like one part moves, all parts move, and, and things like this, and all able to be manifest within their body. And it's incredible to get that, really, to get people doing that after just a year is um, its almost unheard of, you know, because normally if you're doing weekly classes and seminars, it's so spread out and, and life gets in the way, it's very difficult. But here everyone's just focusing on that, that one thing. So that's been great. So then the other thing I learned really is, and this is really what I'm, the main thing I wanted to chat about, mostly to get it clear in my head, I guess, <laughs> more than anything else is, how much you have to do as a teacher, like your role, especially if you're in this kind of intense training. It's maybe not the same, like it wasn't quite the same when I was doing weekly classes in the past in the UK or something. But how much you have to do, how many roles you have to fulfill is quite amazing. And it, you know, it's a lot because people are here full time, meaning their whole life is here. Do you know what I mean? And uh, And I'm not... I'm not someone that's interested in the arts for the sake of the art. You know, like, I don't think, oh, everyone's going to come out with the best long fist form and everyone's going to be the best at push hands and form. And, like, okay, fair enough. You do need skill at those things. Students are developing skill uh, to the best of my ability to help them in, in those things. Uh, and they'll, they're doing very, very well. They'll excel at those. But I'm more interested in the complete package for who a person is. You know, like, are they getting what they need in order to grow? And that's a kind of very organic process because as you get to know people, you get to know more about what they need. So, uh, for example, with, with regards to someone doing full-time training, they need their health to be good. That's the first thing. I mean, that's even complicated enough in its own right. If they're not healthy, then that's a weakness in the training because I don't believe that a martial artist should be unhealthy. I don't believe that a martial artist should be unfit. I don't believe that a martial artist should not know how to manage and work with their health so <laughs> even though you start out with teaching something like you know i'm going to teach tai chi or something you end up covering a lot more you know i ended up discussing at certain times aspects of nutrition 
uh, to adjust their diet little bits, just to, just to adjust the diet of the students to make it more effective for what they're doing. And some, you know, some people I had to speak to individually and get them to experiment a bit with changing their diet to make their body a little bit healthier, cut some things out and change these things. You end up realizing that there's no point going into any of these kind of complex internal principles if people don't have good posture and their body isn't open and comfortable. And if they're not comfortable in their body, then there's something wrong. It's not healthy. So they need to understand how to stretch, how to stand, how to sit, and then how to get strong, how to be a muscle in the right places so that that muscle doesn't get in the way of the art, but also they need the right kind of strength for what they're doing. It's like anything. You can't, you can't just randomly make your body strong because you need a very specific bodies for these kind of arts. So teaching people how to strengthen and how to exercise, even suggesting how they use the gym at certain times to build certain physiques. And you get into that and then you end up getting into all kinds of stuff because you've got people here the whole time. And I'm very, very aware that I don't want to overstep the mark into people's lives. So when they ask my advice, I tell them, look, here's my advice, but you know, you're adults, you, you do with this as you, as you wish. I'm not your guru. I'm definitely not. I'm still an idiot finding my way myself in these arts so I can only advise but you end up advising on all kinds of things like uh, you know how they're fashioning their life and and how they're managing the balance between personal life and training and, and very <laughs> complex things you know and then as you start to go into it you realize like this is the difference between teaching on a small scale and then on a full-time thing that whether you like it or not your responsibility is there for you to be involved in so many different aspects of a person's transformation and then you realize how much trust someone puts in you to to do that it's incredible really like it's a lot of pressure and I guess at the start of the year I felt it I felt that level of pressure and felt not ready to do it and as the year went on I, I became more comfortable with it because I realized that the information I'm giving or the advice I'm giving is not just like random plucked out the air or from the Akashic field or whatever people say like it's based on actual education I've done. So because I'm a Chinese medicine practitioner and I've studied numerous times for many years Chinese medicine, including universities and apprenticeship, I understand about health and I understand how to manage the body so that it's not too damp, not too dry, so the blood is strong, the chi is strong, the yin is good, the yang is good. <clears throat> and then also nutrition as an aspect of that and an understanding of this. And I've had to work medically with some students to get them fixed up ready enough to be healthy enough to do this. And over the years, I'm, I'm certainly not the, <laughs> I'm not like the, you know, standard fittest guy in the world, but I'm certainly not that bad. And, and I've done enough work in gyms and with physical exercise and external arts that I could help people understand how to work with their posture and how to get their body strong and how to target these weaknesses in their joints and their backs. And thankfully, some of the other teachers here have very good knowledge on this as well from other therapeutic modalities they do. So sort of starting to put that together for people in their bodies has been really good and really nice to see. You know, we had some overweight people that lost some weight, feel a lot healthier, got some people that are underweight, got some more muscle mass on them, feel a bit better. People have got more flexible. Some people have managed to strengthen around injuries to get their body better and all that kind of stuff, you know, that almost takes, well, it does, it takes precedence over learning how to do the form well or learning how to issue gin or learning how to catch someone's root and stick to their center. All of these like internal skills or learning how to build the dance. Yeah, like all those things are become secondary and it made me realize that that is the difference really with teaching in this kind of way. And I think it was a real epiphany for me that you can't just teach the system and hope it's okay, you know. It's like, I know there's some, I, I see this sometimes, like I see people, I don't want to talk negative about stuff. It's not negative, it's just a different opinion on my part, okay. I see a lot of people or some people studying like internal skills, how to do fajin or how to manipulate the energy or how to do something and, and you see them practicing and I've seen them in parks, I've seen them on videos doing quite advanced things but then when I look at them they don't, they, they're working on something advanced but they don't have the basics of how to be well like you can see they're not strong in their body, they're not healthy, their posture is bad, they don't know, they don't move well, they don't have any strength, they look s sort of stodgy and fat and just not good like they're not healthy and then you see their faces they're not happy either like because if you're not comfortable in your body this form that you live in you're not gonna be mentally sound and then they're not centered or anything and, and I think it's almost 
it's it's not almost it is i think it's unfair and i've made this make mistake myself i've made this mistake myself in the past it's not i'm not pretending it's not an error i've made but i see many spiritual teachers trying to teach these really sort of high level energetic or, or subtle things but you're doing someone an un injustice if you don't deal with the foundations of helping someone learn how to be healthy and mobile and and comfortable and you that becomes like a big responsibility of the teacher. It's like, do you teach the esoteric technique, which is far more interesting, to be honest, or do you work with people to get them to the absolute basics so they're healthy and happy and comfortable? And I think as a teacher, especially if you've got people long-term, that's where you start. And you can do little bits of the other, of course, but your, your focus needs to be on that because if people aren't at the baseline of health and strength and comfortable in themselves, happy in their mind, you know, like life is good, life is okay, then all the internal techniques in the world are not really going to make any difference. And in fact, the, the opposite will happen is if they start studying the esoterics and going deep into energy work, often it turns into a love of power and manipulation, which becomes unhealthy. And sometimes it unroots them as well. It's like you need to be, like mentally, you need to be healthy within your body and strong and sorted as a person before those kind of arts are studied. So here in this school, I've been trying to, kind of do that trying to work with people and then you realize what a responsibility it is because if you don't know how to do these those things yourself how can you help people and you can't like i say just like psychically download it because i don't believe in that i think when a teacher says they psychically download something in the majority of cases they're just excusing themselves for being too lazy to go and learn something can't be any more <laughs> any more blunt than that that is how i see it so you have to get off your butt and go and do it you know and it, it's like Already I realized, like, from the Chinese medicine studies and nutrition studies I have, I have the basis to help people, but I need to go deeper into into that, into how to optimum nutrition for health. And, and then I need to, you know, look deeper and deeper over this winter into the body mechanics to make the body stronger and function better. Even though I've done years and years and years and years of that study, I need to go deeper into it because if I'm not deeply understanding that, I can't help the people to the best of my ability. So then I'm not doing my job as a teacher. So my role as a teacher, when I move into full-time training and, and teaching people in this way and having more of an engaged involvement in what they're doing means all of a sudden the pressure is on me to learn more. Like I need to study more. It, it, if I wasn't teaching, it's like this. If I wasn't teaching people, maybe I could just focus on what I'm doing. But because I'm teaching people, I need to continue to develop my knowledge in all of the different areas to make me more efficient as a person so I can help people in all these different areas. And then, of course, if there's an area I can't help in, then I need to find a professional or a therapist or a teacher who is good at that area I'm weak in so I can suggest they go to those people because just like any therapist should signpost to another professional if it's out of their remit, so must an internal arts teacher. So I must recognize my weaknesses so that I can best help people grow in that way. It suddenly makes things complicated huge amount of pressure and also immensely fascinating it means that i'm when i'm not teaching or training the rest of the time here you know I'm, I'm often studying and researching and trying to understand more about health and and well-being and how to more about these foundations and i mean i've got uh university qualifications in psychology as well as um chinese medicine and, and stuff like this and so I, I have quite a background already, but still I need to go deeper, need to go deeper, need to go deeper, need to go deeper. That's the responsibility you have as a teacher. It's, I think it's a mistake, you know, to teach. And then I think there's a mistake to make, which is either teach and then not keep furthering your knowledge. That's an error. So if you have a teacher that doesn't train or a teacher that doesn't have a teacher of their own, I'm always a little bit shady about that. Like I think they're, that teacher also needs to be growing and growing on their own is good, but they still need feedback from, from someone else. And if a teacher starts, starts telling you things like, oh, I don't need it because I just download it or I hear an angel in my ear or something, or, like, don't trust that. I've walked away from teachers in the internal arts for saying things like that because it doesn't take very long if you stay with that person. You know that actually it's based in a lot of delusion and it's not, they know it's not true they're lying to you they know it's not true and if they don't know it's not true then they're deluded you need constant feedback from multiple people or peers or or or, or teachers i have even people that aren't my official teachers i have peers that are so skilled i'm very respectful of their skills other people that i've had on this podcast some of them and 
including ones that stand dressed semi-naked with makeup on you know in drag and you know they're a little bit mad some of them but <laughs> super respectful of their skill sets and even the communication with those people is always to further my knowledge so i can learn from them too and and hopefully they learn at least something of me and that is the that's the kind of growing process you need to go through as a teacher real people to help you to grow so that that's a mistake if you're a teacher especially if you're working with students to that level that you have them all the time you must continue to grow and that and then at the same time, you can't just grow in one area. Like me personally, if I was just worried about me, I would just go deeper and deeper into my meditation. But because I'm teaching people and students need to go through the whole process themselves of working with their body, activating the energy system, I need to become better and better at those areas that are not specifically relevant to my training anymore. Like I need to understand more about the physical weaknesses that I don't personally have because I'm just as likely to get other people coming into the class and I want to be able to, I sincerely want to be able to help them with those weaknesses. So I need to study more. I need to understand more about what happens when somebody's back is weak and not working properly and, and how to function, uh, get that functional again. And I don't have a bad back. I never have had a bad back. That's not where I suffer with an injury, but I need to understand it more. And Because otherwise I can't provide the best service and that's the pressure of a, a teacher, which I like. Don't get me wrong. I ain't complaining. <laughs> I love it. I love the challenge. I love the fact that my life is given over to this. My life is absorbed into that process. And that's great because if my life wasn't absorbed into something like that, I'd probably go and cause trouble somewhere. So it's better for me. It's better for me. You know, it's the other mistake with a teacher, which I've made. So again, I'm not sort of talking from a higher place. It's mistakes I've made as well. And I'm I'm learning. I'm learning all the time. And I've learned this year about this. Is that you can't uh you can't only focus on what you need, you know? Like it's it's no good for a teacher to specialize too much unless they're only going to teach students who specialize in that same area. If you specialize too much in one area, it means you can't teach people the full spread. So you you know, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> letting you know the pressures of, of teacher and what I learned and then the other thing is and this is one that drives me mad I, uh, it drove me mad when I was a student looking for teachers as well is you can't teach people where you are you can only teach people where you came from so for example any skill I have in Tai Chi or Negong or whatever I'm teaching any meditation whatever skill I have is based upon a sequential series of stages that I've been through to get to there because everything is built upon something else so that means i don't teach the students where i'm at i teach the students where i came from so they have to go through at least a, a similar if not the same process as i did adjusted for them personally of course but they have to go through a similar process to get to the same sort of place that i'm at so it means that you're never quite teaching what you're training. Like if I'm ever teaching the students what I personally am practicing, something's gone wrong because it's taken me my entire life from age five to get to here, 43. I don't know how old I am. Yeah, 43. It's taken me that many years of development to get to the point where I can make what I'm doing working. And everything I did before was all a part of that process to get to there. And whilst I can't expect students to do like 38 years like I have to get there, I still have to take them through like external training. They have to get strong, capable, flexible, functional, coordinated, then onto energy work, then you build that, and then into... Like people have to go through the same process because if you take someone straight to where you are, you will get bad results, different results and bad results. And I see that mistake made many, many times by by teachers and I don't know why they do that you get like a strong capable confident teacher who can move and it's powerful and strong and all coordination they're really good control of their mind and the energetics and then they have students that are just weak and not skilled and kind of clumsy and will never get anywhere near where the teacher is at because the teacher has simply taught the student what they are currently doing and of course there's no foundation there's no platform to it to be built upon so you're trying to build all of this skill into a an uh, inefficient vessel, I suppose. Shouldn't call students vessels, should I? That's a bit derogatory, but you know what I mean. Like, it's you need the effect, the vessel needs to be good, you know. So they have to go through that process. That's very very important. So sitting here, like running this school, all of a sudden, especially because I've not really been a martial arts teacher for many many years. I've been teaching Neigong mostly, but now teaching martial arts as well. Like I've had to, you know, like really think and 
work out what was the process I went through and then and took people through that. So, I mean, like, if I can give you an example, you know, <laughs> over the course of, let's just take last week, just last week, last week in the classes I did, we did some quite complex Negong, admittedly, and the energetics are pretty good. People are filling the Dantian very, very well. There's plenty, there's an abundance of qi in many people. Dantian is turning, qi is pushing through the body. On the fullness level, they're getting pretty full, like it's good, the body is filling up. So, did some good Negong. Very proud of the students for what they've achieved in in that particular area you know but then on top of that you know also did uh basic punching like how to throw a punch because if you've not done it before that's quite alien and and we've been working on how to throw a basic punch straight and a hook and across for all, the entire year really like it's taken that long and the mechanics of a northern shaolin punch are quite complicated so building up on that and then showing how that turns into a free form punch more like how somebody would box or spar and and that sort of training you know converting the sort of traditional into the sort of modern version of of striking which is maybe actually that w mm, that would be an interesting podcast at some point actually for those interested to to share in my view how the tradition and the modern come together on on things like that yeah i'll do that soon so maybe i'll get someone to come in and do that with me actually that'd be a good discussion so working on that, you have complex Negong, building these mechanics and springs and punching sort of basic techniques into the body. But then on top of that, I also taught stretching. People are still working on how to stretch, not just do the stretch, but how to stretch, how to work it open. And then the difference between younger people's bodies and older people's bodies, injured people's bodies, non-injured people's bodies, how to work with that. And then on top of that, like also end up spending two and a half hours explaining to, um, well, both genders, but this week's especially on how to regulate the menstrual cycle for premenopausal women and then for postmenopausal women, how to build the blood and negate any imbalances that's arisen from that process. And that might sound like a, a weird concept, but it, it goes back to what I'm saying is if you're a teacher in these kind of arts, you need to engage with every per part of a person's life. And many women struggle with regards to their health. And I've come to learn struggling with understanding about the menstrual cycle and what it means and how to manage it so that it's healthy and doing what it's supposed to do. So therefore there's a whole Chinese medical education on there. We had to include like what to eat at different phases of the menstrual cycle so as not to stagnate the blood, so as to circulate the qi and make sure everything is healthy and take away um, cramps and, and all these kind of things which like prior to full-time teaching never really kind of envisaged that that would be a part of it but but organically that's what i've learned the school is that's because it's a complete education for people's lives that's what it has to be can't just be let's learn this form then let's learn this form and then let's learn how to do this hip throw and let's how to do this kick you can't it has to be more complete than that if you're taking a, a full responsibility for educating people and being as efficient as you you can possibly help them to be You'll never help them to be perfect because you're not perfect yourself, but you can do your absolute best, you know. So chatting with people, very interesting to see how they feel about it and, and you know, seeing how they grow. And, and the feedback has been largely immensely positive. Some complaints about how tired people are, but that's life. That's the nature of the training. But it's, you know, like I, I think that I think many people who come out of this will probably go on to teach themselves i would assume lots of the people who finished the 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 duration of this this school which will go on for several years you know and i like to think that when people come out they'll be quite complete themselves so they will have medical knowledge to assist people in different ways as well as the martial arts knowledge know how to get people to get strong and maybe these discussions we've had on a lot of psychology which is a kind of mix of Western and Eastern psychology to understand the mind should help people to help them to help others to deal with their mind and and as I go deeper and deeper with the group here into medicine and nutrition and stuff they can help people with that as well and I, I have really high hopes for the ones who complete this training how they'll do because that's how I see it that's how I see what martial arts should be that's what a martial artist to me should be not just someone who's able to you know <laughs> block a punch and kill a man with a <laughs> single flick of the finger or something childish like that you know i i think they should also be able i think they should be able to do that not kill a man but they should be able to defend themselves and they should be able to fight and they should be physically capable but they should also be calm and they should be centered they should be medically capable they should be a rock 
for other people in times of difficulty and they should be able to understand how to work with their body and their health and their mind and their spirit in order to create the most complete picture of what a, a human being can reach or at least give them the tools so they can reach their maximum potential. And that's really what we've been doing. So out of that, what I've learned is it's really difficult. <laughs> That's what I've learned. It's really hard. Everybody has got very, very different needs. Everybody has got very, very different wants. Everybody's got very different personalities, capabilities, talents and difficulties. And, and I don't think I've had, like I said at the start, such a busy year and such an entertaining year. Like, I'm in love with Bali. It's a great place to be. But on top of that, and, and the Balinese people are, are a marvelous, marvelous community, very, very close to the Balinese people here in this village. But also just like, just, yeah, this appeals to me. My mental energy outside of my own personal training is is highly satisfied by the complexity of this this task. And I want, my dream would be for people to get to the end of this training who've been here for, doing this training and look back on it and think that was really positive and it transformed my life and it gave me the tools I needed to transform my life and transform other people's lives because I want this school to be a massive positive influence within the world and a positive influence upon the people that I'm teaching. Whether I manage that or not, I don't know, but that's my aim. That's my aim. I don't I don't really care about turning out the most efficient fighters. Uh, they could go to a MMA school for that or something, but I just want the people here to have the tools they need to grow in the best possible way. Sometimes it means I have to challenge them, sometimes not. And, and also they must have the tools to be able to help people. And I want them to be kind. Strong and kind is the preferred outcome for the people. Strong, kind, and capable. That sounds good. And if I come anywhere close to managing that, then I'll be very happy. But right now where I am, I'm at the end of year one. Year one. I have a few days left now. Then that's it. Year one done. Then over the winter, I will hit my own training hard. I'm going with my friend Adam for a bit of traveling. We're going to do a bit of training in a few other countries. And then after that, I've got my friend Joey coming over. That's always chaos and fun. And yeah, other than that, I'm going to train harder and study harder so that I can do an even better job or better job than, than I did in this first year because I want year two of this school to be transformative that's my aim so yeah i'll end there really just a quick one really and and i know you know I, it doesn't have the biggest audience this podcast i don't mind it's a niche subject and i'm not the best public speaker not the most charismatic i'm not you know a joe rogan character or anything like this but uh, i know there's quite a lot of you there's a number of you that like to follow these so i apologize for the gap and and i just sharing my thoughts really some lessons from this year of training and Hopefully there's something in there that stirs some thought if you're a teacher of arts or maybe in how to approach the arts. Um, and if not, I apologize. I, I have some uh, plans for some podcasts coming up, actually, and some guests and things as well I'm, I'll bring in because I've had a bit of gap from these. Try out these new microphones, see how this goes. And uh, I've got some very structured ones coming up. I'm thinking of doing some instructional ones over these podcasts as well. I know there is a great yearning for knowledge from women for women sorry from <laughs> knowledge from women on how women's uh, energetics work and i want to cover some of that and i've got some that i want to do on sort of the importance of ethics and morals in in martial arts sort of wudu and i got some ones that i want to do in a very structured way so i'll try to get those done over the the winter um yes hopefully that will at least provide some service to people or something to distract you while you're listening to this podcast while you're driving around or whatever. So thanks very much, guys. I shall see you soon.